Hey everyone! So I am back for a video. Yay! It's been a little while. Uh, this year's been crazy busy. Um, we got engaged in May and we've been planning the wedding and the honeymoon, all the things, as well as normal life stuff. So it's just been busy, but it's all planned, ready to go, <laughs> and um, yeah, we're really excited. But anyways, let's get into some leather stuff. So first thing, um, I updated the website. So the custom listing to buy a custom bag on the website, um, it's now only a $50 deposit to reserve your spot. And then on the listing, it links to the pages where I've described the leathers, the fabrics, and the designs that I'm offering right now. So from the custom listing, it'll take you to these other pages that describe everything. The design pages will also go over the prices, um, the base prices. So additional things will be like little add-ons, like a braided strap is a little bit of an addition, and just other little things might be an addition. So just message me, um, chat with me about what you want, and we'll figure it out. And then yeah, just a $50 deposit and then I'll create a custom listing to purchase the remaining balance. That $50 does go towards the purchase of the custom. So it's not like an additional 50, it goes towards the, the total of the bag. Um, but I thought that would be easier because then the remaining balance will be due when the bag is done and you see it and you love it. And um, I think I clarified the designs and the leathers and everything a little bit more in all of those posts. Um, also, I've been playing with earrings. <laughs> These turned out a little long. I don't know if I love them. They're a little bit much for me, <laughs> but I kind of do love them because I never wear earrings this big, but they're like still really lightweight. So they're not heavy. I don't know, they're really fun. Maybe they look better without like a hoodie, but I think they're kind of cool. They're the round braids that I do which I'm obsessed with the round braids. I've put them everywhere. They're on my purses, they're on my keychain, they're on our spare keys, they're all over. I just put round braids on everything now. Um, yeah, so I have been playing around with some designs and as soon as I feel like I have some good designs like dialed in, I'll put some on the website. Um, yeah, I'm excited, I think they're fun. And I already started making like bracelets, so now I'm just gonna have leather all over. <laughs> I was even thinking about putting like leather belt or something on my wedding dress <laughs> but I'm wearing cowboy boots so I have some leather so I think I'm good um anyways the first thing is I want to show new leather this is peanut bison so under all the leathers and descriptions it just says coming soon for peanut bison here it is here. Um, I am about to cut some of this up and make it into a Delilah, an all leather Delilah with the um, dark forest mushroom lining. Um, I thought that would be a good bag for like autumn and Halloween -y stuff. So this is the peanut bison. It's a little bit more dark and brown than toast bison, but it still has all the character of a bison leather. So tons of pull up, variation, some pebbling. Um, where's that scratch? Oh, there it is. There's a scratch, but it's all like, oh, there's the big scratch. Um, it's superficial, so it's not deep at all. So it won't affect the durability of the bag. It's just cosmetic. And if you like that kind of character, like if you want a bag with a beautiful scar right on the front, Bison Leather has that. And it has really nice pull up. Yeah, I really, really like Bison Leathers. They're definitely one of the thicker, heavier leathers that I work with, but they're so yummy that they're worth it. Okay, so let's go over the designs that I'm offering right now, starting with the largest one. Can you tell I love the Southwestern patterns? So this is Delilah. This is the Delilah bag. I think I posted like a short video about this design, but I never showed it like on the body and stuff. I don't think. It's been a while since I made a video. Um, so it is, I think it's 14 inches 
I measure my bags, the width is gonna be corner to corner on the bottom. I think it's 14 inches by six inches and about 12 inches tall. Um, the, like, for sure measurements are on the website, but I think that's correct off the top of my head. Um, yeah, so this is what it looks like. Sorry, I should be wearing not the same, or like a busy pattern, but I got cold, so I put on a hoodie. So that's what it looks like with a braided strap. The bison leathers make really nice braided straps. They're very like comfortable and squishy, not squishy, but um, flexible, pliable. And I like this bag with both straps. I thought that having two straps would drive me nuts, but I actually really like it. And I think some people, just based on the pictures alone, were thinking that this pocket was really small. It's not. It's a big pocket. It fits my phone really, really easily. I think what makes it look small is when it's sitting and the bottom is kind of squished looking, but it's actually pretty large. So it fits my phone and a few other things. My phone only takes up like that much space. So it's a big pocket. This is Toast Bison. Um, I just got more toast in and yes, I know I have a scratch, but that'll buff out with a little bit of conditioner. I just, I don't mind if my bags get a little bit of character. Um, I've started doing round braids on zipper pulls because they're so incredibly handy. So it just helps so much having that big pull to open and close your zipper. Um, I also have antique brass zippers in right now. The shiny gold brass ones weren't very smooth, so I wasn't loving those, but these antique brass ones are really, really smooth. I love them so much. So I bought a ton because I was afraid they're gonna like sell out or be discontinued because um, I was getting shiny brass ones that I loved that were smooth, they were discontinued. So these, I bought a ton because I don't want to run out. I will eventually, but for right now I have a lot. Um, and then this is what it looks like with the crossbody strap. And I think I've gone over this in a video, but with the thicker leathers, a buckle won't fit. Um, Cause it's just too many layers of leather together for the buckle to fit. Um, you can't fit the tail through. So what I did is I did Chicago screws and they're just the right size. They're perfectly flush. They're super secure and still completely adjustable, but they're also more like low profile and lighter weight. So I really, really like the way that that turned out. Um, I'm still doing buckles on any leather that's thin enough, but for thicker leathers, I love the way that that worked and you just unscrew it from the back and then move it to a different hole, screw it back in, and it's like really secure. They're tight. I use the screwdriver to tighten them a little bit, but not like super tight, and they stay in really well. And then of course, I always do a tail keeper because I don't want that tail flapping around. So that's the Delilah. It's a nice big bag. I love having the wool for, for the top section because it just lets it get a really nice drape while still being like so pretty. I carried this around at the county fair. We walked around for at least a few hours and it was totally comfortable. It didn't hurt my shoulder. I had all my stuff in there. It was fine. I thought it would get heavy, but it didn't. So yeah, I really, really loved it. Um, the sewn straps compared to bridal leather are just so much more comfortable. And I've had people ask me for thicker straps than this. I don't do it. The thinner, the three quarters of an inch is the perfect size. It doesn't dig into my shoulder um, and it doesn't fall off my shoulder. The thicker straps, like if I made this one inch, it would push into my neck more. And I find that they fall off of my shoulder because they're thick so they just like want to go off the edge so three quarters of an inch is like the perfect size i the only exception is the braided straps these are about an inch thick but they have the unfinished suede 
layer on the underneath part so that really grips to your shoulder. So that's why I won't do my crossbody straps in a thicker leather because I just don't think it's worth it and I don't think it's as comfortable. So three quarters of an inch for these guys are perfect. Um, anyways, the next size is gonna be this one. I think I named it the Heather or the Hannah. <laughs> I'm starting to name all of them just to like differentiate them a little bit better. And I'm only doing one size per design. Yeah. Um, so this one used to be my XL tote. I think it's Heather tote now. This one is very similar size to the Delilah, except it's seven inches here, and I think it's an inch or two shorter this way, um, and I think it's the same height. But this one, what I really like about it is I do the straps like this with the rivets on the end here. <coughs> Sorry, my throat is very dry. And if you do this one in a squishy leather, which I highly recommend because I love squishy leathers or canvas, the camo canvas is the best. Um, this makes an amazing convertible backpack. So I will show you that. I think I've shown this bag before. Also, this charm is by, oh my gosh, Valeska, Valeska's Beaded Beauties, I think is what it's called. I think that's her name. Isn't it gorgeous? It doesn't really suit this bag, but <laughs> I just kind of threw it on here for a placeholder for now because I'm not going to use this. I'm using a different charm from her for now, but it's so pretty. Anyways, um, it goes from a crossbody strap. I'm sorry if you can hear the wind also. My window is behind the camera and it's whistling. It just got really windy. But this is what it looks like as a crossbody bag. And I love, love squishy leathers. Thick or thin, I don't care, squishy leathers. It just like conforms to your hip and is so perfect. I don't know, I don't really like stiff leathers. They're not my thing. So, I see you. <laughs> Sorry, it's my dog. Um, so it's the perfect little crossbody. These earrings are getting caught on all the purse straps. Um, it also works really well just on one shoulder. But my favorite thing about this bag, this is one of my personal bags, is you pull the straps through. You can see the strap is connected here pull it through on both sides and you want to do it evenly and voila super comfortable backpack and I have carried this as a backpack before it is really comfortable I think this was like one of the first ones I ever did this on so I made the straps a little too long it's on like the shortest setting and I've got all this tail all the way to the bottom but it is so comfy and it looks a little better when there's stuff in it because it'll be draping at the bottom instead of all <laughs> empty the way it is now and it looks like it looks a little funny kind of like where the top goes together but if you need to throw your bag on as a backpack because it's more comfortable and you're walking for a while these are really comfortable my thing with other convertible straps is if the <clears throat> attachment point for the top of the shoulders to the bag, if they're wide apart, it's falling off your shoulders. So by doing it this way where it pulls through in the center, the straps are like together in the center of your back. So these aren't gonna be slipping off, if that makes sense. But yeah, I've walked around with the bag full with it in a backpack, super comfy love it um the cinch bag though i can also make the cinch bags with convertible straps and they're my favorite because they look normal because it's the cinch top and then as a backpack it just looks really good so this is a really similar size to the delilah so these are both nice big bags this one's just a little deeper at the bottom there. And I think it's like an inch shorter. Yeah, it's an inch, inch less in the width. So 
but they're very similar. But this one I cannot make into a backpack. I don't think it would work. So, this one. Um, so, the next size is this beauty. I forget what I named this one too. Um, I was going to call it the classic zip tote, tote, excuse me, but I think I gave it like an actual name, but I don't remember what that name was. Um, but this one is a little smaller. It's 10 inches from corner to corner here. So it's wider at the top than it is at the base, but I always measure it from corner to corner on the base because that's where your stuff is sitting, is in this bottom uh, footprint. So that's where I measure because I feel like that's a little more important. Um, and then it's five, maybe five inches? Yeah, I think it's five inches from corner to corner. <coughs> Sorry, dry throat. It's so windy and dry right now and I'm a little dehydrated, so it's just like really scratchy. <clears throat> and then 10 inches tall. And this is Horween leather. Um, I've made maybe four of these bags now and they're amazing. This one is my personal bag. I really, really love it. I've been carrying it for like, since I made it three or four weeks now. Has it been that long? Yeah, it's September. It's been that long. Time is just flying. <laughs> um, but this is Natural Derby and nut brown derby and you can see it has like some wrinkly texture amazing pull up some pull up in the darker one as well it's a little more subtle but oh my gosh i love this leather and this leather smells like a good boot store like leather oh it's so good um and then the strap I did in both leathers as well. So it has both colors on there. And it's, yeah, it's nice and thin and comfortable and pliable. And then the crossbody strap is two layers of the nut brown sewn together with a buckle. This leather is thin enough for a buckle. And of course a tail keeper. I put a rivet in this tail keeper because it was a little too big so it's slipping down so i stuck a rivet in that last hole to hold it in place so it'll still let's see if i can show it'll still move up and down but it's attached to the end of the strap piece so i can still adjust it but it's not going to slip off and that tail is not going to be flipping up at all so i really like that that was pretty cool i felt like a genius when i did that um, <laughs> But more about this leather. So this bag, like I said, I've been carrying it for a few weeks. The lighting right now is awful because it just got like really overcast. I think it's about to like dump on us here. But I think you can see compared to <clears throat> a new one, look at that patina. So this leather, the Derby Horween leather is a veg tan base and then it's finished with a blend of waxes and oils. So it has that wax and oil for like water resistance and stain resistance, but it's still gonna patina. Look at how much it's patinaed. Like it's like a caramel now instead of that light color. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, I'm obsessed with that. It's so pretty. And it still has really nice pull up. Oh, I love it. And it's also gotten like more squishy and soft, but it's still really structured to where like, it'll hold itself up totally fine. But it started to kind of, um, when I carry it, it's kind of started to like dip like that. Cause it's just getting a little bit softer, but it's still super easy to open. It has that antique brass zipper on it, and it's easy to close. Um, one of the major things that's different about this design is the way that I did the straps. So I have a D-ring attached to the front, and then a D-ring attached to the back. And the reason I did that is because when I put the D-ring attachments on the end here, it takes real estate away from the zipper opening. I have to decrease the zipper opening by like an inch and a half on both sides. So it makes the zipper opening so much smaller. 
and this already isn't like a huge bag so for this bag it's fine to use up an extra bit of fabric and not have as much of a zipper opening because it's a big bag um, but on this one I wanted the zipper to be nice and wide so that it didn't have a lot of that space taken away on the ends and I have my current favorite lining right now is a <laughs> cow with a chicken and then there's some little chickens yeah I love this lining it's so cute and then in the front pocket it's already open there's a cow <laughs> I really like it and it's a nice light creamy mm, yeah it's kind of like an oatmeal white which it does not look like that on the camera but it's a nice light color so I can see in my bag really easily um yeah just love it and it's yeah it's just getting nice and soft and the strap in the nut brown is also getting like really pliable and soft and it's so comfortable so we went to an overland expo which is actually at the same place as the county fair and walked around for even longer and I was carrying this bag it wasn't uncomfortable ever um, I mostly carried it with the crossbody strap and it was super comfortable I really like the way that having the d-rings attached like I don't know the bag hangs really well on my body and we got stuck in a downpour at that event and I was like no I don't want to put on my rain jacket I'm fine it's not gonna rain that much so my bag got some water on it it had some like droplets and you could see on especially the natural um, top here some watermarks and stuff they dried like nothing happened and then I did put on my rain jacket because it was pouring <laughs> and it only went down I put my bag underneath the jacket but the jacket would only go down to this far on my bag so the bottom of the bag I actually posted a picture on Facebook got like completely drenched this was like really dark and I could see on the other side of the leather it was drenched all the way through it dried like nothing happened um, I took everything out of my bag I conditioned it with BIC 4 conditioner I have not sprayed this with anything and I massaged my bag just for fun bring up some more pull up and stuff and it was like nothing happened it's as good as new it's just breaking in to be so soft and squishy if I could only work with Horlin leather I would that'd be fine but I don't know I like bison leathers and all the other leathers too and I can't make cinch bags out of Horween and I love my cinch bags so yeah and Horween is expensive <laughs> it's really expensive but it's so worth it it's amazing leather so I highly highly recommend it there is a Horween bag in the shop I will show you it's this one this was the first version of this design that I made and the thing I don't love about it well I'm not a shoulder strap person I like my crossbody bag um, but I thought it'd be cool to see the natural strap patina along with the Horween so it's gonna be really pretty whoever buys this bag um, and it does have a d-ring for the crossbody um, strap I just haven't made one for this if you want a crossbody strap and you want to buy this bag just let me know I'll make you a strap it has that the d-rings on there so I can do that and then it has the braided strap in both leathers too and the zip pull on this one and this one has the cow and chicken on the inside the pocket um, and then on the inside inside it's these cows because I thought that the multi-colored cows would go really well with the multi-colored leather so I really like it it's cute um, <clears throat> but the thing I didn't like about this design sorry is that it kind of is wider at the top than it is at the bottom so with the new design the permanent version of this design I tapered it at the top so it's more of a square less of a what is that trapezoid so it's not as wide at the top and I, I like this version so same bag just the first iteration of it but it's still like a fully functional bag and because it's wider at the top the zipper is even wider by two inches I think so it's got a nice big opening it's still like so amazing the leather and 
I thought I was gonna keep this one because I, I did I was like I'm gonna make this one for myself so I picked the like most beautiful pieces of the leather and then I didn't love the bag <laughs> because of the shape and I don't know I don't like these straps I don't know why I thought I would keep it but it has the most amazing pieces of the leather so if you want this bag it's amazing it's just not my jam with the shoulder straps <sighs> but they're gonna patina to be so pretty and they're really soft and pliable I haven't even massaged them but this is really nice veg tan strap it's like the last that I had sitting around I was saving it for something special and it got used so um, <clears throat> the last one this beauty it's the same design and I feel like since it has less going on, you can really see that nice square shape. And this is English tan Horween. So more Horween leather, more derby. Isn't that pretty? This one has really nice neck rolls. And I say, like, people call them stretch marks or neck rolls because they do happen, like, right here on the back of the neck of the cow is where I always find it on the hide. So they are neck rolls or stretch marks. There's some on this side too. Look at all that pull up and variation. This bag is sold, but I really wanted to show it before I ship it home. So again, it has the attachment for the D-ring here and here. And I love the way that that sits on the body. And then I did the braided round, round braid strap for the zipper pull. And then just one of these Pulls for the front and a vertical zip pocket with of course the gorgeous lining behind it and this style the pocket goes all the way so the whole front of the bag is a huge pocket so if you want more space in your front pocket this design um, but this one my phone fits in this pocket just fine so it is a big pocket but if you want a huge pocket this is the whole whole thing is a pocket and then the inside I figured that this was like a really good autumn fall color so I paired it with a really nice autumn color lining so my standard um, lining design right now is three pockets along the back of the bag it's perfect I put my sunglasses um, feminine products or snacks and then uh, gum or mints in those pockets and then a leather pocket on the front side of the bag and I've been doing a d-ring to clip your keys because it drives me nuts when I can't find my keys and I usually do like a pen and a pocket knife and receipts in this pocket and then just all my stuff in the rest of the bag so this one's sold I'm actually gonna pack it up right now but isn't it pretty I love it um, I do want to show Oh, I have it on the shortest setting right now because I was trying to figure out how to photograph with my new mannequin. I'm not loving it. I think I'm going to go back to just like my backdrop, but yeah, with the way that I have the D-rings on the bag, it sits on my body really well. I really like the way that it sits. And honestly, I don't even notice that it's like the D-rings are like that on opposite sides of the bag. I didn't even notice when I'm carrying it or when I'm just looking at it. It's just really pretty. So like I said, with the key ring or the, the D-ring for a key leash that I've been doing, this is what it looks like. So I have it in the same spot as that bag I just showed you. And then I just do a long key leash so I don't even have to unattach it from my bag. It's just nice and long so I can unlock my door and then voila, throw it back in. But then I always know like where to start grabbing it so that I can, I never lose my keys. And then if my hands are full and I'm like trying to get out of the house with all the packages, I can leave it hanging and then lock my door and then walk to my car. That's literally what I look like. I'm like, so many packages. <laughs> Hi, you wanna be a part of the video? Come here. He wanted to say hi. So the last bag I wanted to show is this 
Willa cinch. So the only size I am making of the cinch bags now is what was called the small. It's not really a small bag though, but I'm calling it Willa, the Willa cinch now. And it's just because the other sizes weren't working well. They just weren't it. Like they just weren't the one. This size is perfect for a cinch bag. The other ones I just felt like there was too much of this like top area that goes wasted and it just didn't cinch as well because they were wider and yeah this is the best size for the cinch bag it is not small it fits all my stuff and i carry too much stuff so can you go back to your bed you want to say hi hi <laughs> okay go to your bed sorry he was on the ground dancing at me he does that he dances so he wanted to say hi um this one is in the shop and so it's 10 inches from corner to corner, four inches deep from corner to corner, and then 12 inches tall, but the panel, the cinch panel, isn't really usable space. So from below the panel to the bottom corner, it's about 10 inches. That might sound like a small bag to some people, but it's really not. And these front pockets are big enough to fit a phone or whatever you need, and I feel like they're pretty secure. It, I never worry about my stuff when I carry this design and have my phone in there or even my wallet in there. It just depends on where you are too. But this is the slate leather. So I can only use the more lightweight squishy leathers for um, cinch bags. Unfortunately, I can't use Horween leather. I see you. Hi. Go to your bed. Go on. <laughs> um, so it has to be a nice lightweight squishy leather to be able to cinch. This one I did knots. And the straps and the strings, the pull strings are in Cypress. I really like the way that the brown and blue look together. And this leather is like dry and velvety, but oh, so soft. It's a little bit of pull up. It's so pretty. And I have paired a really nice braided strap with it and a crossbody strap. A nice tail keeper. See, this tail keeper is nice and tight, so it's not going to fall down like the one on my bag where I just like stuck a rivet in it. But yeah, and the cypress leather is really nice and pliable for a strap. And it's a little bit grippy too, so it'll grip your shoulder. So this one's available in the shop. And here's the lining. Again, three pockets on the back leather pocket on the front and then this is where I put the d-ring for a key leash on this style because it just makes sense because that's how the straps are so yeah <clears throat> this one's in the shop and this one's in the shop but these are the only ones from the video that are available and then last thing because I already did like a little bit of a call out to her is the other charm from Valeska's Beaded Beauties. I hope I'm saying that right. That's what it is in my head, but I could be like spelling it wrong in my head. <laughs> so I could be saying it wrong if that makes sense. But I love this one. It goes so well with this bag. Look at it. So yeah, I think when I purchased these from her, she had some Halloween themed charms and she had a few left. So she might still, I would go check it out. And if I'm saying that wrong and you can't find her, message me. <laughs> I'll spell it out properly for you so you can find her page. But yeah, she was really amazing to work with and I love her charms. So I know I make charms, but I don't make them like that. Hers are really pretty. Anyways, I think that is everything. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry if I rambled. I always do because I love leather and I hope you guys loved my video and yeah, have a great day. Thanks. Bye.